Names of quadrilaterals and triangles. A level 5 grade E topic. We'll start with the triangles. There's three main types of triangles. We have an equilateral triangle. Equilateral. When you're spelling uh, maths words on a maths test, it doesn't actually matter if they're spelt perfectly right, but so long as somebody can tell your, that word that you've written from any other word. Um, special thing about equilateral, from the name equi, lateral mean equal sides, all the sides are the same, and that's denoted here by those three lines telling us all the sides are the same. Uh, we could also quite easily just have the numbers on the sides to show that they're all the same. Okay, and the opposite of that is where they're all different, and where all the sides are different, that's called a scalene triangle. And that sometimes is denoted with marks like this. So you would have three different marks, meaning they're all different. Now we could have the numbers on there, so it's like two, three, four, something like that. And the third type of triangle is an isosceles triangle. Oh, spell it right. Now, an isosceles, isosceles triangle has two equal sides. Um, there are variations of these types of triangles. Uh, the equilateral triangle has no variations, they're always just the sides the same. Um, but often we have something like this, this triangle here. Now, you might be tempted to call that a right angle triangle, which it is, but technically it's an isosceles triangle first because we've got two sides of the same as an isosceles triangle. Now we can denote different types of isosceles triangle by the types of angles they've got. So if it has a right angle in the corner, then we would call it a right angled isosceles triangle. Um, other variations, we could have one where the angle, um, all the angles in the isosceles like this one are less than 90. So all these are less than 90. And that would be called an acute angled isosceles triangle. I've got the, some words down here that we need to know the meaning of. So that's acute angled isosceles because all the angles are less than 90 and angles less than 90 are called acute angles. If we had a much uh, wider version of that, so let's have a look at, let me draw one in here. So if we had this, and although this is not going to be exact, if this, these are meant to be the same. If these two, we're told that these two are the same, and this angle here is bigger than 90. Uh, it doesn't matter that these two are acute, but we have one obtuse angle, which is greater than 90 but less than 180. So that would be an obtuse angled isosceles. And we could have the same thing for scalene triangles. If all the angles like this one are less than 90, that would be a, an acute angled scalene. If we had w one angle of 90, so say we had this sort of triangle where they're all different, but one angle is 90, that'd be a right angled uh, scalene. And if we had one big angle in it, like the obtuse, but all the other sides were different, then that would be an obtuse angled scalene. So there's all the different types of triangles, but the three main key main names are equilateral, scalene, isosceles. Often though, um, right angled, types of triangles come up. Okay, moving on to quadrilaterals. I've got all the, the, the main types of quadrilaterals here. Um, and we're gonna use some special words to try to explain some of their properties, which is the main thing. We do need to know um, the different types. Now, quadrilaterals are quite interesting because um, things like squares, although all the sides are the same, on a square and it has right angled corners. Um, sometimes people don't realize that a square follows all the properties of a rectangle, a rhombus and a parallelogram. Um, a rectangle, some people think that uh, the rectangle has to have one pair of sides longer than the other, but it doesn't. Um, it just has to have right, right angled corners and four sides, that makes a rectangle and therefore a square follows that pattern it just has an extra property that all the sides are the same. Similarly, a square is a rhombus, because a rhombus has all the sides the same, but the angles are not necessarily 90 degrees. But they can be, it could be 90 degrees, and therefore, if it was 90 degrees, a 90 degree rhombus, um, then that would be a square. And all three of these are all types of parallelograms, a more general um, 
shape where the opposite sides are parallel. So these two are parallel and these two are parallel. We mark parallel sides by doing arrows like that. So the arrows pointing in the same direction, the same number of arrows on the sides that have um, that are parallel to each other. Okay, so that's the word parallel, meaning that the, the lines will never meet. And that's how we show lines of parallel. Perpendicular means things at a right angle. So these, this square shows me that this line here, this side, and this side are perpendicular. There are some other properties that shapes have. Now we'll just draw in um, some diagonals. This is quite a common um, property of uh, quadrilaterals that's looked into. So what's well, not a very good color to use on there. Let's undo that. And let's use a different color. Let's use the, that's where we use a darker color. Okay, so these diagonals in a square have the property that they are perpendicular. They cross at right angles. Okay, now some shapes have that property. Some of the quadrilaterals have that property and some don't. So let's just look at all of them. So the rhombus does this. I think you can tell that, that has a right angled corner there. Um, a rectangle though, a general rectangle, one that's not square, um, does not always have right angles. It does not cross a perpendicular. These are clearly obtuse angles and acute angles. A parallelogram, just like a, uh, a rectangle, doesn't doesn't follow that property. But a kite, which is uh, looks pretty much like what you would expect a kite to look like, does. And always kites, all kites, and we can tell they're kites by the fact that they their diagonals cross at right angles. They have a pair of sides at the same length, but not parallel to each other. There's no parallel sides. So these two are the same. These top two, and these bottom two are two the same. And that means it has one line of symmetry going down the middle. Things like squares, a square has one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. A rhombus, one, two lines of symmetry. Um, a rectangle has one, two lines, but not diagonals. Parallelograms have no lines of symmetry. Um, trapeziums are shape, four-sided shapes that have one only one pair of parallel sides. As soon as you get two parallel sides, it becomes a parallelogram. But if you only have one pair of parallel sides, it's a trapezium. Often, uh, the sort of standard trapezium people see is this shape, where these two sides are the same as well. That's a special case of trapezium. That's the isosceles trapezium, where these two are the same. Uh, but trapeziums are any shapes where the opposite sides are parallel, and they don't. They do not follow this rule of the diagonals either. Diagonals are ne not always at right angles in trapeziums. In fact, very rarely. Okay, so I've been through all the properties. Um, one other thing you might need to be aware of is rotational symmetry. So how many times does something spin on top of itself? Um, a square would spin on itself four times in one one full turn. A rhombus would be twice, a rectangle twice, parallelogram um, twice, a kite just the once, and a trapezium just the once. And one of the words that we, we should also be aware of is the word adjacent. Adjacent means next to. Okay, so if we were talking about adjacent sides in a rhombus, um, we could maybe talk about these two are adjacent, or these two are adjacent, and so on. So adjacent means sides that are next to each other. So these two adjacent sides in a kite are the same, and so are these two.